Jonathan Selberg here from Tech Cocktail, and you're going to be talking to me about a very exciting event you guys are putting on. But first, what exactly is Tech Cocktail? You guys have been around for a while, so just explain what you've been doing, as well as what is the event that you guys are putting on. Sure. So Tech Cocktail is a news and events organization focused on tech startups and entrepreneurs, and we've been doing events and covering news about startups since 2006. So we've actually been around for a long time. We do events all over the country in about 30, 35 cities wow. around the US. Um, we've interviewed thousands of entrepreneurs. We do all kinds of events from pitch competitions to mixers, speaker series, conferences, all kinds of things. And you guys have even written a book as well recently, yes. which is huge. So. Startup Mixology. Yes. Awesome, so uh, you guys are running Tech Cocktail Celebrate Comp, right? Yes, very excited about this. It's in October. October really 6th and true. 7th, just like a week and a half away. No it's a pressure. Scary, no pressure. <laughs> um, it's in downtown Las Vegas at the Inspire Theater, and, um, and we're super excited. Cool. So this is the second um, year that you've run this. Yes. And so I've heard that it's a completely different format. So for those who have already come, you know, if they attend again this year, they're going to see something completely new. Yes, very different from last year. Um, this year we have two full days of conf like speakers and sessions and all kinds of interesting things like mentor circles, um, breakout sessions with the speakers. So you'll come, you'll get to hear from you know people like Tony Shea and Jen Lim from Delivering Happiness, but you'll also get to meet people like David Cohen, who's the founder of Techstars, nice. and uh, Neil Patel from Kiss Metrics, and Donna Harris from 1776 in DC, and basically from communities all across the country. So we have two tracks this year. One is completely focused on building growing startups, okay. building your company. The other is focused on the communities that nice. support startups. So this is what Downtown Vegas is all about. This is what Tech Cocktail has always been about. So we thought, what better way to bring this all together than to not only bring in 50 startups from around the US who have been part of our events all year, but bring in people who are building the communities all around the country and the people who have built companies and know how to do it. That has always been my favorite part about Tech Cocktail is you guys don't just do the business side of things. You are always very plugged into the community side of things. So that's really awesome. And I love that that ends up being injected into all your events as well. Thank you. So uh, give me a little bit of gossip about the speakers that people <laughs> can expect other than Tony Shea and, and other people. Who are you the most excited about seeing? Ooh, who am I the most excited about seeing? Um, I'm excited about seeing Jen Lim speak about delivering happiness, but mm -hmm. I also am super excited. We have people coming from Startup Buenos Aires. Um, we have uh, Neil Patel coming from Kissmetrics. Nice. Um, we have, I'm gonna try to think there are a few <laughs> more of these on the spot. Um, we have the founders of Galvanize. Uh, I mentioned Kissmetrics, 1776. Um, this is a lot of awesome people, though. That a you lot of awesome bring, people. Yeah. Matt Galligan, the founder of Circa. Wow. Um, hopefully, some of you know Circa, the news app. We have about 30 other speakers <laughs> and judges and mentors. And what's great this year is that you know you go to those conferences and you see these great speakers and you hope to get like five minutes with them after yes. their talk. What we've done is asked every speaker to actually dedicate time like an hour of their time where they will sit down with people in a mentor circle so you can go into a room, sit down with just a couple other people and this person and have mm. a real conversation. That's incredible because yeah. a lot of the time there's like this weird gap between, you know, like the stage and the actual audience and then you just feel like you never get to learn about your current situation with like a speaker that can give you advice. That's exactly. Really awesome. So actually next week all of our attendees will be able to sign up for their circles. So they'll be able to look at all the people mm -hmm. who are coming and sign up and get their session. Fantastic. That's awesome. So as a treat for the audience members that came tonight, uh, I hear that you're giving away some tickets. Yes. So what you guys need to do if you would like to come to the Celebrate Conference is tweet out tonight only. Tweet out using the hashtag CelebrateConf. That's celebrate conf and tweet out something about the conference and we're gonna give out five free tickets tonight. So start your tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so once again the date is October sixth and seventh. And it's being held at the Inspire Theatre, right? Inspire Theatre. Awesome. Yes. Well I wish you all the best with the event going forward and thank you so much thank for you. being on the show. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you everyone. <laughs> sure that all of our guests here have a very warm reception. Yes, and that certainly was a lovely reception. Thank you so much. <laughs>
So I'm here with Cheryl, and Cheryl, you're from the LV Photo Collective. Yes. But before we actually talk about that, I need you to do me a favor and pick the Downtown Fortune Cookie of the Week for us. Oh, thank you so much. I was yes. wondering what this lovely bowl of fortune mm -hmm. cookies was all about. Mm -hmm. So anyone you like. Okay. How about? That looks like a good one. one. Okay. Can we get our fortune cookie handler, please, Alan? <laughs> Thank you, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on to the LV Photo Collective. Um, tell me exactly what it is and how it all got started. Oh, thank you so much for having us tonight. It's mm -hmm. really a pleasure to be here. And uh, it all started uh, probably a year ago when I moved from New York. And I was so happy to live in Las Vegas. And uh, I was really part of the up and coming art scene that's nice. down, happening downtown. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I found out that there was really a need, uh, as a photographer myself, a need for photographers to have a place to network and uh, share resources and get together, and also a, a physical place to show our work. So that's why I uh, started the Photo Collective. This is such a fabulous idea. So you guys are people that kind of mentor each other and get together, and you have a physical space that people can come to as well, right? So Absolutely. Tell me all about what goes on at the Photo Collective. Oh, thank you so much. We have a, an amazing <coughs> space downtown at uh, Casino Center in Charleston inside Reclaimed Arts. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a gallery down there, so uh, if you're a photographer, if you know a photographer, or you just anyone that likes to come and uh, meet the photographers and look at beautiful work, uh, please stop by. We're really tied closely to First Friday, nice. and this upcoming First Friday, we have one of our biggest shows ever. Oh, very cool. So I hear that your community is like super diverse too. So mm -hmm. there's no need for beginners to be scared away and there's no need for veterans to kind of feel like they're not valuable because they're a little too advanced, right? Uh, right, right. What we want to do is have a, a gallery for the community to support the, the photographic and the artistic community. And we have a very diverse group, uh, all the way from, uh, for example, young Je Jesse Hudson. He's just turned 16 wow. and he's going to be a guest photographer for the upcoming First Friday. So that we're super so cool. excited about that. And then we have also ph photography veterans such as Bill Payne, who has been uh, uh, doing photography, showing in galleries for many many years so it's a great group that's amazing thank so, you um, I imagine that Las Vegas is a very eclectic town for photography right you've got everything from the sprawling mountains and red rock and the desert to the neon lights the interesting tourist scene and the, the weird little artsy pockets so I'm sure that you guys have a lot of really cool subject material like locally come through the space too right yes we have a, a lot of really exciting material and what's good is every month we change it out so it's always brand new photography so whenever you come and see it there's always something new to see whether it's from landscape portraits uh, uh, artistic urban photography so we've got a little bit of something for everyone I love this so much and like I, I didn't know about it before um, this episode so I definitely want to come down and visit please do so you guys have a Facebook page for those who want to kind of um, find out more immediately Right. Yeah, that's a great way to get in touch with us. Mm -hmm. Please check out our Facebook page at Las Vegas Photo Collective and uh, start a conversation, like us, uh, say hello, and you can get a profile of some of the photographers that are coming up and see a little preview of their work. And also don't be shy about sharing photos on the page oh, too, Oh, no. Right? We love photos and we love meeting new photographer friends. Awesome. So once again, what's the address for people that want to drop in? It's a 1114 <laughs> uh, Casino Center inside Reclaimed Arts inside the gallery at Casino Center in Charleston. Charleston. That's a fantastic location. Yeah, it's, it's right there and uh, right in the middle of the exciting First Friday action. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show and telling us all about the LV Photo Collective Thanks so show. much for having us. Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
right, so before we start, um, you guys are going to be really excited about this because we have Oh, yeah. Whoa. Big fan. You keep your fans in the corner? Yeah, I do, actually. I okay. brought them all the way from LA. All right, so we didn't think about a drinking game beforehand, but we thought we might open this up to the audience. What do you guys think we could do for a drinking game? Like, we play quarters or drinking. a certain order? Now, mind you, drinking. I never have done, like, the traditional drinking games of college. So you're, it's going to be new to me. Who's got a flip cup? Flip cup. Oh, yeah, we, I've done taken once where, like, you've got taken two. Like, every time that he, like, hits somebody or does something violent. <laughs> Every time I say, uh... Take a shot of whiskey, then every time you take a shot of whiskey, you take a shot of whiskey. <laughs> never, never. Oh, God. Do you think you could polish off this bottle? No. Not me neither. Don't even try that. Jeez. Awesome. <laughs> so that's what it'll be. When we take awesome. Whew. It's smooth, yeah. though. Wow. But when we do good. that, okay. So just, uh, okay, let's get you intro here before we run out of time. Yeah. And don't even get, like, a word in. This is just so, apple juice, by the way. Yeah, it's not. She's <laughs> drinking whiskey through a straw, if you guys want to know how weird. If you guys really want to know how weird she is, <laughs> off camera. Um, so our next guest is uh, an actress turned journalist turned entrepreneur. You were an actor in Mad Men, which is a very popular 50s kind of cool show. <laughs> yeah. And then Whiskey is appropriate. Oh, very cool, yes. Did your character? Oh, actually, I don't, okay. So, anyways, I don't know all that stuff. Um, but then uh, you went on. You went on CNBC, and you um, learned a lot of skills there. You were working okay. behind the scenes and on the camera in some cases. So yes. you learned a lot of journalism, um, behind the scenes work at CNBC, and then you went on to become a very great entrepreneur. And you are now the editor and chief of Millennial Magazine. And I think we all should give Britt Heisen a huge round of applause. Thank you so much for coming out. Okay. Um, so, give me a tiger. Rawr! Okay. <laughs> that was not even, that was not planned like it seemed like it was. Okay. Um, my, my <laughs> so, like, how, does, how come for you, you were just an overnight success and you didn't have to put any work into anything? Never an overnight success. It's always the 10 year journey. And in my case, um, especially within journalism, it's been a four year journey. Uh, Millennial Magazine really was the brainchild of something that I started when I was 21. Um, so in 2010, I went to a conference and David Zasloff from Discovery Channel had said, if you're not on YouTube, you're an idiot. And you know, as an actor at that point, it was something that was not the preferred method of acting, right? You didn't want to go on YouTube. It was kind of rinky at that time, especially with web series. But coming from the president of Discovery Channel, I said... So this guy's credible? Yeah, All okay, right. a little bit. <laughs> I said, absolutely, I have to do something like that. So I, I thought I was going like to go... An idiot. Yeah, but I thought I was going to go behind that. the camera, and instead I was handed a microphone, and I interviewed 25 of the top Burning Man artists Ooh. at this uh, rave called Lucent L'Amour, um, and it basically kick-started my career as a journalist, and it was a natural fit for me. So The rave kick-started your It prison? really did, okay. yeah. You know, to be honest, I had no idea it was a rave. I, I just thought I was doing some publicity for the company I was working <laughs> with, which was the Do Lab. Um, so but you, yeah, you had no idea? Yeah, I had no idea it was a rave. And what did you, th you think the pill was for? <laughs> you know, headache. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, you know, but that really did kickstart my career as a journalist, and it was a natural fit. And from there, I, I was hired to do a bunch of different um, videos for a lot of people. And then I got into politics, and then I got into CNBC as a financial. I, I was actually an editorial assistant, yeah. and um, I learned so much about the young entrepreneurs of our generation and how incredible they are and how incredible we are. I mean, as a generation, every stereotype that's out there is false. There, it's, it's totally delusional. We are doing incredible things with our lives. We're changing the world to meet our standards. Right. And that's what Millennial Magazine was all about. In the process, I was doing a blog that was, it, it turned international. We had somebody from Nigeria that was talking about finding your own inner happiness, and somebody from Singapore that was talking about workplace bullying. And I saw that there was this underlying thread of solution-based news that they were providing me. So from there, I realized that I had something so viable in a magazine that really pinpointed who the millennial was. Gotcha. And that's what and we're doing. And you say solution-based news because they come up with an actual solution to a problem that can be replicated, yeah, and then by absolutely. sharing it in a media way, then everybody else exactly. gets a real Exactly. And as a journalist, like coming from traditional outlets, especially with CNBC, and now that was financial, but within politics. You said that was political. Oh yeah, politics. Yeah, within politics. <laughs> um, you know. 
it was always about reporting the issue and never really reporting the solution. And actually, at the time, it was oh, 2011, Occupy was happening. And I went down to Occupy LA, and I met some of the most incredible people. It was the first week, it was super clean, it was a weekend, and all these professionals came down and really shared their opinions. And Did I it? realized that it was more about occupying your heart than it was about occupying uh -huh. your city. And it, a lot of people okay, didn't like really that. catch on to that. I was going to make a joke, but I like that comment. Yeah, <laughs> hashtag that. Yeah. Occupy your heart. Because but did they, that's what did it they, is. Did they make a difference? Like, are the, did the bad guys get no, screwed? No, oh, I mean, Occupy didn't do anything, and that was the unfortunate awesome? part. No, no, not awesome. It was not awesome, but we but said it. But not awesome still we has it. We said it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I got to sip this. OK, so is uh, Democrats or Republicans better? Libertarian. Oh, my. <laughs> you zigged when I zagged. <laughs> Okay. Um, so I let's. Swagged. Okay, so it was an overnight success. You put a lot of work into it, is I did. what I'm hearing. Yes, absolutely. So it was really this transcendence of adaptation. You know, when I was working on one thing, it kind of turned into the next thing. And you could look at it as failures, that I've had all these different type of entities as, you know, quote unquote companies. I never actually declared a DBA until Millennial Magazine. So that is my official company, I'd have to say from the start. But. There were these series of adaptation that if you found yourself at this dead end, it wasn't a failure. It was, right. okay, that didn't work. Let's move on to the next thing. And I had all these ideas. It was kind of like my head exploded with ideas. And then I had to kind of like sink back into yeah. one idea yeah. and use that as my arrow to kind of take me to where I am See, now. That's actually like, so when we were chatting, that is the thing that stuck with me too, is I, so, so uh, let's back up a second. You said it's important that people learn a lot of skills, yeah. right? You think it's important that they're kind of jack of all trades so they can kind of put things together. But then on the other notion, you say like, zoom in on one thing and let it kind of evolve or, or yeah. So just I mean, put as those juxtaposed. As, yes. Like, okay. So I would especially say that for an, an abstracted for like an entrepreneur that's yeah. dealing with like a sub. So I didn't train as a journalist. I never went to school as a journalist. You know, I didn't study journalism. It was something that I naturally fell into. But that was a skill. Hey, awesome. <laughs> Just tasting, getting it ready, getting my tongue ready for hey, the attack. Hey, I got a straw, so. Okay. Risky thrift. Um, but it was it was a skill that I learned, and and it really fit me. But over time, within the four years, I've learned so many skills than I have in my entire life in this short amount of time. And I really have to say that as an entrepreneur, when you wear every hat. You have to be proficient in everything that you're doing. You don't have to be the best, because that's what you hire for, but you have to be proficient in it. And you learn so much in the process. Oh, that's interesting. But, you know, do, am I a graphic designer? No, but I do graphic design. I'm a journalist, first and foremost. That is my, my arrow, and that is the direction of this magazine. It's editorial. So everything's going to kind of fall in line. So whether you're a musician and you learn, you know, your post production, your mastering, but first and foremost, you're a musician, so that's what your arrow is. It's anything, it, does, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, you should really learn a ton of skills because you never know where life's gonna take you and you're, ne you're never gonna know when you're gonna have to learn another skill. And in my case, journalism started as, first it was the story, then it was the questions, obviously the writing of it, then my editor dropped out and I had to learn how to edit. Gotcha. And then it was, oh, you have to build a social platform. Okay, I have to learn HTML and I have to kind of figure out this world of tech. Right, right. And everything kind well, of fell in line okay, with so that. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about like how you know kind of when to evolve this thing. So I do, I definitely believe that like you shouldn't be kind of all over the place if you zoom in on something. But as a, a founder of a startup that didn't, that did fail, I don't think we iterated enough. We didn't pivot enough. Like, what do you? Could you help me through? Like, I know if I remember you started with Discover Your Voice. Could you walk me through like your story and maybe like touch on? What were the triggers when you knew you had to switch? Like, what, how do you get so rapid iterations? It's interesting. Okay, so I started with Behind the Scene with Britt Heisen, and that was a, a, a little web series about. You want to do another shot too? Yeah, well, it's okay. kind of a long story. All I just right, want to, all right. Sounds like a long Sorry, one. Sorry, guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good. I'm excited, but this will help. So it started with that, and it, and then I realized that it was everything that I was doing was showcasing millennials doing what they loved. And that kind of yeah. turned into, wow, they were discovering their voice within this. And I wanted to pitch a show to a friend of mine who was uh, in development at FX. And I, call, I coined it Discover Your Voice. And that's kind of where I, I created this web series about people really discovering their voice in whatever capacity that they were working. And a friend of mine in, in FX had said, you know what, they're not on, they're not watching TV, they're online, so you have to build a social platform. Here I am as an actor turned journalist, kind of this new paradigm for myself, and I got a freaking code? Are you kidding me? 
So I but ended you up. Jumped at it. I, I did. I Good did. For you. And I, I, I wasn't that I necessarily yeah. coded, but I found a platform that enabled me to do what I needed to do at the time. Okay. And that in itself taught me about web design, and it taught me about editorial online, like digital magazines, and uh, and, and that just kind of transformed everything. Was the was the moving motion of adaptation. And, and okay, so and when this person was like, hey, this is how I see the world changing, and then you were able to change. How much of your time, like, if you could break down the percentages, are you out there looking for people who, to give you new knowledge to help you pivot, and then how much of it are you like learning a new skill for it? Like, to how do you honest, break down? I'm, I'm going through it myself, and I'm kind of navigating these waters unknowingly. You know, I'm I'm swimming in dark water. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's happening. Ooh, good metaphor. Ooh. It's yeah, like we're kind a, of like in the deep, deep, like deep a, sea. A tank, like we're underwater, yeah. and but it's all But then, like all yeah. of a sudden, like a light's gonna come out. You're gonna find that like fish. an electric eel. Like yeah, an electric like eel a, out and of it's nowhere. gonna yeah. swim, and it's gonna take you to where you need to go. And that it, becomes your guide. Yeah, and it's like way better in water than you. Oh, but ooh. but the but the great thing is that along the way you find support systems, and and you bring people on that really support your ideas and help Fisherman. you grow. And you know, the, Fishermen, they help you. I don't you know. They're kind of the more like your school of fish. Okay. And they're just kind of following along with you, being. Like, hey, we're gonna go wherever you go, oh. and you're like, oh my god! I like, do you really know where I'm gonna go? And I've got the you know, best right? school of fish fact for another episode. <laughs> oh shoot, we're at ten, we're getting we close just to ten go minutes. Right, All right into like Nemo. Okay. <laughs> But okay, I want to share it. It's an interesting fact. Well, you know, all fish in the schools they try to get to the middle, so that's why it does that. They all constantly try to get to the middle because they're all scared when they get to the edge. Okay, okay keep going though. <laughs> anyway, so just, that, that yeah. school of fish followed me to Millennial Magazine, and now we are really positioning ourselves as Life Magazine, and we're going out and chronicling the individuals in our generation who are really making this world a better place, that are not awesome. only standing up for their, their the causes that they believe in, but they're also the CEOs that are revolutionizing business. They're the celebrities that are involved in good work. They're the everyday people who are doing something with their life. You know, that's yeah, what yeah. we're showing. We we are really going into the everyday person. It's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, hope is that like it's like the late cue? time to cue it up music. <laughs> what? Trying to get off. Anyways. We haven't drank enough. But hopefully, hopefully you will find many of those people in our community. I think there are many you there will find. I mean, you and you guys can check example. it out. We would come and no, no, I you. lost money. I lost like a lot of money for somebody hey, important. Hey, it's not called a failure. It's called we're gonna adapt now. So check out millennialmagazine.com or on Twitter at millennialmags m a g z. Thank That's you very it. much. I appreciate Thank you. Very you. Much. Give a round of applause. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Sponsor Dr. Greenberg from Las, Va uh, excuse me, Las Vegas Dermatology. We're very excited to have you here. Jillian, thanks for having me. Yes, of course. And you've got all kinds of swag for the audience. We love that. Brought brought some bags, and I also brought uh, some of my team to to talk with people afterward. Yeah, they're, your team's all out and about. I love it. And then we're actually we're gonna have a giveaway at the end of even more swag. Yeah, so. uh, some laser hair removal giveaway for people who don't want their extra body hair. Yeah, because who wants that, right? It's a very popular thing now to get yeah. rid of unwanted hair. Very trendy. So tell me why everyone should have a dermatologist in their life. Everybody should have a dermatologist because they need somebody to point out where their bad growths are and to help them look better. So where's most of people's concerns? Is it like, Health concerns, or I know 
Cosmetic things are becoming more and more popular. So what services do you have? So really it's twofold. So one on the medical side, skin cancer, acne, psoriasis, uh, things that are concerning in the medical way. And then on the cosmetic side, uh, laser tattoo removal, laser hair removal, Botox fillers. So uh, derma penning, which is a new microneedling procedure. There's a lot out there to help people enhance and improve their appearance. Oh, interesting. So are more, most people focused on that then? I'd say it's about uh, 15 to 20 percent of the business is, is that part of it. And then people come into the office with a medical concern and I've seen even little pictures where they say, really I don't have a medical concern, I just wanted to talk about the cosmetic stuff. And then for insurance reasons they wanted to come in off of for some, insurance. Other, <laughs> no, some other reason? They really do come in for another yeah. reason, but when they're in the office all of a sudden some other concerns pop up. And yeah. And do you find that most people have a dermatologist or they don't know where to go or? Uh, a lot of people are, I get a lot of funny questions from people, well, you're a dermatologist, are you a real doctor? And the answer to that question is yes. Uh, we, I had to go to four years of medical school and do an internship and a residency and I actually did two residencies, one in internal medicine, so I was at Georgetown for three years and then I did a dermatology residency as well. Huh. So what inspired you to become a dermatologist? Uh, I. I was a fourth year med student. I'd already matched to do internal medicine when I found dermatology. And I thought it was the coolest thing. They were lasering people's wrinkles away and cutting out skin cancers and removing cysts. And people actually wanted to see the dermatologist, whereas some of the other doctors, people didn't want to go there. And I thought, what a nice field where people want to see you. Yeah, especially if you're making them look better. Especially it, it, in Las Vegas. In Las Vegas, there's a lot of that. It's a competitive environment, and so you get uh, some people who are getting older for the field in which they're in because younger people are coming every year to take their jobs, so they need to do more to look better. And okay. Yeah, we can help with that. Yeah. Okay, so tonight we're actually giving away um, three certificates for um, laser hair removal. So if you go to the... Facebook page of the Downtown Podcast. We actually have um, something on the laser hair removal from Las Vegas Dermatology that you can share. And if you like Las Vegas Dermatology's page, we're going to give away these certificates. And that'll be announced after the show. We'll reach out to you through Facebook. So thank you so much. We're excited to give these away. I know people are definitely into it and they want to win. So yeah, well, thank you. And you know, we also have uh, our, our Twitter for Las Vegas Dermatology is at LVDerm. And I have a personal uh, Twitter account. It's yeah. at HL Greenberg. So I try to keep mine uh, separate from the business. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, and you can also find us um, at the downtownpodcast.tv. Follow us on Vine, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you. wondering why on the fortune cookie segment we do not have our fortune cookie mm, fortune deliverer the reason for that is sometimes our fortune gets a little misconstrued and uh, we are a family friendly show so unfortunately I cannot share what the fortune of the week was but I will share with you what it was supposed to be <laughs> Pardon my awkwardness. The fortune for this week is don't kick a gimped horse in the mouth. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next week. Beat bums. Beat bums. Downtown project. Vegas, we the hardest. Yeah. All right, all right, it's downtown. We running this. Rest of y'all just running lips. Creeping on and come up here. Vegas, yeah, we in this bitch. Tweet to your followers. Remember like a flashback. Forget to spell it with the hashtag